Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 60. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, BI 348 chapter 8 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're talking linear programming and using Excel Solver to find an optimal solution. Now, in this video, we're going to do a transportation problem. And this is called a network graph that gives us all the information we need to figure out the minimum cost to ship from these locations to these locations. Now here is our graph. Production plants, this will be the supply side. And these are called origin nodes. We have a plant in Oakland, Portland, and Seattle. Now if we're producing items in these three locations, we need to look at the supply constraints. That means the maximum amount for each one of the locations that they can produce. So in Oakland, the max they can produce is 5,075. Portland, 6,150. In Seattle, 2,725. Now these arrows are called arcs. And the numbers are the transportation costs per unit to ship from Oakland to Rapid City, Oakland to Spokane. So we have our transportation costs and our arcs. And then over here, this is the demand side. Now these are distribution centers in Spokane, Las Vegas, Coeur d'Alene, and Rapid City. And on this side, we have the demand constraints. Now this is the exact amount that Spokane has ordered and is 6,150 Spokane ordered. Las Vegas ordered 4,125. Coeur d'Alene, 2,050. And Rapid City, 1,625. Now the question is, how do we pick the right route to get the right number of items to each one of the locations? That's where linear programming and Excel Solver will come in handy. Now, the trick is we're going to build a cross-tabulated table like we've done so many times in this class already. Oakland, Portland, Seattle will be the row headers. Spokane, Las Vegas, Coeur d'Alene, and Rapid City will be the column headers. Now, I went ahead and put origin or production cities as row headers, distribution or destination cities as column headers. Now, we're going to define the decision variable as number of units shipped. The origin, that's going to be the row. The destination, that's going to be the column. Now I went ahead and put in x11, x21, x31, any particular x. That means this x, that means number of units from Portland to Coeur d'Alene will be in row 2, column 3. All right, I'm going to copy this, control C, and then paste control V. And I'm going to put my dummy data. In the active cell, I'm going to type the number 1 and then Control Enter to populate everything from that active cell through the highlighted range. Those will be the number of units shipped from any particular location. Right now, we're shipping one from Seattle to Coeur d'Alene. These are the decision variables that Excel Solver will determine for us. Now, we have to put the shipping costs in. So I'm going to highlight the same range here, Control-C. And in A16, I'm going to Control-V. I'm going to change this label, Shipping Costs Per Units. Now I'm going to right click and use the mini toolbar. I do not want this red. I do not want this bold. Delete. Now I look from this chart, and very carefully I have to enter the correct values. Now I'm actually going to highlight in advance and use the tab key. The tab key will move the active cell, and when it gets to the end, it will move to the next row. So I'm looking for Oakland. I need 3.5, 2.5, 6.75, and 7 along the first row. 3.5, tab, 2.5, tab, 6.75, tab, 7, tab. I continue on. Now I need to get the Portland shipping cost per unit. So in the active cell, 6 tab, 5.5 tab, 2.25 tab, 3.25 tab. Now I'm going to get Seattle's shipping cost per unit, 2.5 tab, 5 tab, 3.75 tab, 5.25 tab. 
Now notice that we set this problem up differently than we did in earlier videos. We had a whole separate section for our constraints. But guess what? I'm going to notice that the constraints all have to do with units on the supply and the demand side. So guess what? Here's Oakland when I add it up and get a total right there, I have to make sure that it is less than or equal to 5,075. Similarly, here's the destination. On the demand side, that total right there has to be exactly equal to 6,500. So I'm going to highlight the actual dummy data, the number of units to ship with some empty cells to the right and below, and use Alt equals to add them up. That's a quick way to get your sum function in all the right places. Now I'm going to add some labels and formatting. All right, now that I have the supply side totals and the demand side totals, I need to get the actual constraints. Now I'm going to type these in. These are the constraints for supply. So I'm going to look over here for Oakland. It's 5,075. I'm going to look over here for Portland. It's 6,150. For Seattle, I'm going to look down here, 2,025. Looks like I have one too many. All right, we'll do the same thing for the demand. Here's Spokane total, and I need to compare it to the 6,150. So I type 6,150. 4,125 for Las Vegas, 2,050 for Coeur d'Alene, 1,625 for Rapid City. Now, before we do anything else, I want to look at, we could do this longhand right here. The objective function is simply each one of the number of units times the shipping cost per unit. Add those up. That's the total cost we're trying to minimize. That's the objective function. Constraints, notice we use the sum function to add up all of the items delivered to each one of the locations and put our comparative operator. Down here on the demand side, we added up the individual decision variables and set them equal to the demanded amount. Now I'm going to scoot this down out of the way. And I want to be explicit like we were in earlier videos. We're actually going to have to enter each one of these constraint functions in and compare it to this. Now in earlier videos, we put the comparative operators right in the cells. And I'm going to do the same thing here, because I want to see visually on the spreadsheet what the constraint functions are. Now in the active cell, I'm going to type a lead apostrophe and an equal sign, because each one of these totals for demand has to equal exactly the demanded amount. And if I were just to type an equal without the lead apostrophe, Excel would think it's a formula. So when I control enter to populate all those, there it is. When we get to our solver dialog box, objective function, comparative operator, right side constraint amount. Let's do the same thing over here. All of these actual total amount have to be less than the maximum that that location can produce. So all of these, active cell, apostrophe, less than or equal to the maximum amount. Control Enter. Now we still need our objective function. And notice that's a big long one, but it's no problem. In earlier videos, we saw how we can use the sum product function to take a range of values, multiply it by a second range of values that have the same exact dimension, multiply, and then add them. So over here, all right, I have a cell for our objective function, and I listed the goal, which is to minimize. All right, you ready? equals some product. Array 1, hey, these are all of our decision variables that solver is going to figure out what the right amount for each one should be to minimize cost. That's array 1. And notice, three rows by four columns, comma. Some product doesn't work when it's multiplying and then adding arrays unless they're the exact same dimensions. Three rows, four columns. That means number of units times shipping cost per unit, Oakland to Spokane, all the way through to the very last one. Number of units for Seattle to Rapid City times shipping cost per unit. Ready? Close parentheses and Enter. And there we are. We've set up 
objective functions, and all of our constraint functions with our right-hand side constraints. Now we can use Solver to get our optimal solution for total costs. In fact, I'm going to put total costs. All right, you ready? Let's click in that cell with the objective function. Data, Solver. Up at the top, set objective. That is our objective function. Our objective is to minimize. Decision variables, here they are. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. That's our non-negativity constraint requirement for our decision variables. Simplex LP, that'll do our linear programming. Let's click Add. Now the first one, and in earlier videos we had an objective function, an operator, and a right-hand side constraint. But anytime you have a bunch of objective functions and right-hand constraints, and it's the same exact operator between all of them, you can simply in cell reference and constraint enter the entire range. I'm going to enter the four objective functions, change the operator to equal sign. Notice these equal signs have nothing to do with the solution. That's just for us visually on the spreadsheet to see what we're doing and remind ourselves. We got the right operator in our Add Constraint dialog box. The right-hand side constraints, boom, there we go. Click Add. Now we get our Supply side. Those are the constraint functions. Our operator, that's correct. Right-hand side constraints, there they are. Now this is our second set of constraints, but we actually, when I click Add, we have a third constraint here. And we are going to tell the decision variables that we only want those to come out as integers. So by doing this, we'll only get whole units, because we're not going to be able to ship partial units from one place to another. Now we can click Add. Now I click Cancel. There's my set objective, objective function. There's our goal, our decision variables, our set of constraints. We got our settings correct. I'm going to click Solve. And just like that, Solver found a solution. I'm going to click OK. And there is our optimal solution. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use a network graph to get our information for a transportation problem where we needed to minimize costs. All right, next video, we'll actually see a finance example where we want to maximize portfolio returns. All right, we'll see you next video.